Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, this is our first webinar of 2022. So we're so excited to be kicking off the new year um, with this best practices webinar. We're talking through today um, how to best target utilizing the different verticals for recruitment, real estate, and event marketing. Uh, my name is Mary Claire Hitson. I'm the director of sales for our platform team. Um, so we're going to get started talking through just a few best practices for webinars. So all participants will be muted during the webinar, but we definitely encourage you guys to interact in real time, engage the chat feature. We will be recording this and sending it out to all registrants of the event. So if you miss it, um, if you weren't able to attend, or if you want to share with colleagues, friends, whomever it may be relevant for, it will be sent out after the webinar. Um, if you do have any questions as we're going through, please submit those into the chat. We will have time at the end of the content going through a Q&A section. Um, so, you know, if you don't feel comfortable, however, going through and, and sharing your questions here, you can follow up with the email that's on the screen right now at expert at groundtruth.com. Or if you're already working with us, reaching out to one of your um, dedicated platform specialists or account executives to have that uh, question answered directly. Um, and finally, we do have a poll, a survey that will come up at the very end. It's so important that we get your feedback. Um, it's very quick. If you could just uh, fill that out, that'd be super helpful. So what's our agenda look like today? We are going to be talking about a little bit, just really quick, introducing Ground Truth um, as a refresher for those that know about us already and our partners, um, but also for those that are new and want to learn just a little bit about who we are, why we're here in this space um, talking today. Uh, we'll then jump into the best practices, going through real estate first, then events, and then recruitment. And they'll be tying in the benefits of utilizing omni-channel as a strategy for each one of these verticals. And then finally, like I mentioned earlier, our question and answer section at the very end. So let's get started. Who is Ground Truth? Who are we? We are the leading location-based marketing and advertising tech company. What we do is we want to find that relevant audience based off their offline information. It's going to give us so much more about who they are and their intent as a consumer if we're able to understand where they're going in the real world. And then we're able to understand that and drive them to take an action, whether that's online or offline. So our bread and butter is offline because we're able to measure the physical visitation of that audience or of that consumer to a physical brick and mortar. But we're also able to get in front of those audiences and drive them online which is really important, obviously, for these verticals that we're going to be talking about today that often do not have physical uh, brick and mortars that they want to measure success to. Um, so why is that important? Because every single one of the um, verticals listed here has a specific audience that they're trying to go after, right? And we're able to do that. Specifically for real estate, jumping in, we have a turnkey solution called our open house audiences. This lives already in Ads Manager. And what it is, is it's a audience that we've created through a partnership with a third party MLS system. What they do is they ingest on a national level, all of the open houses into our platform. We then are able to create audiences based on those consumers that have visited these open houses with different look back windows. So 30 days, all the way to 120 days. We're then able to also understand at the price threshold of these visitors and where they're going. So, for example, I visited a open house um, that's in the range of a $200,000 to $500,000 home 60 days ago. This is great for realtors, for real estate. It's great um, because it's allowing you to get that message in front of that person that's in the buying mindset. But... It's also really beneficial because it's going to help other affinity types of marketers in this space. Think, you know, financing, right? Think professional services. If someone's new to the area, they're also going to be looking for different types of um, companies to help them with projects, cleaning, painting, gutter repair. I'm in this boat right now, so it's very timely and relevant for me. Another option, best practice for real estate is radial fencing. It's great for two reasons. One, because in very populated regions, um, when you're placing radial fences on the property or properties that you're wanting to reach and get your messaging, messaging to, you're also extending that reach to that neighbor, to the neighbors, to the neighborhood who may know or need your product, who may know of someone that's looking to relocate into the area because of the schools or being closer to transit. So it's extremely beneficial to, to utilize the radial fencing for that prop, for that reason um, for more populated regions. 
On the other hand, for less densely populated regions, it's your play for extended reach to make sure you're getting your message in front of that relevant consumer. Okay, so how do we apply this on an omni-channel level, right? So at Ground Truth, what makes us different is we're an audience-first approach across all screens. It's not content-based, it's audience-based. And we create those audiences through our mobile uh, partnerships with over 100,000 different apps and through our blueprints, which are um, MRC accredited and third-party audited. So what that looks like is we're able to understand if a device ID enters the threshold of an open house, enters the threshold of a specific location or point of interest, and then we use those audiences and we're able to target that, that audience, that one-to-one -one across multiple screens. So if we start from a mobile first approach, what you're looking at right now is uh, an example of landing pages that we offer in Ads Manager. They're complimentary and they're customizable. So why this is important and valuable to leverage is for two reasons. One, it's keeping that end user, that end consumer that you're trying to reach within an in-app environment. It's less drop-off. You're not losing them and getting them frustrated because they lost their place within the app, right? It's in-app. So it's keeping them in that environment. And it's also providing them with um, it's probably being you in Ads Manager with additional metric called secondary action rate, SAR. And that's showcasing how many people are taking a second step further down that sales funnel to actually interacting, engaging, scheduling a, a meeting or a virtual tour or calling for a quote, whatever that looks like, right? So this is really advantageous and also allows you to utilize um, video as well, which is a really high performer for CTR. Moving along, we're also available. Or I'll, I'll let this play really quick and then I'll, I'll talk over it. So as you can see in that image, it was basically showcasing a house or properties or new builds and why the type of consumer they're trying to get after would be um, would be relevant to, to, to market to utilizing a big screen. What's important here to note is that you can place um, an overlay of a QR code, right? So that's going to provide more information when that user scans that QR code on their mobile phone, directing them to the landing page or the website to learn more information, right? But the benefit of omni-channel CTV and OTT specifically is brand awareness, branding, branding, branding. So it's very valuable if you're new um, in the market or if you're wanting to reach um, a new person in that market, it's extremely valuable, valuable to add um, a multi-screen approach. And then like we mentioned earlier, again, not just relevant and advantageous for people that are realtors or real estate agents is extremely beneficial for these affinity types of um, businesses within the real estate vertical, like we mentioned, for financing, for professional services, to let them know, hey, we're here for, um, you know, uh, pressure washing or landscaping. And also, if you're buying a new home, you're probably buying new furniture. I know I did. I been going nuts and driving my husband crazy trying to um, redo our home and all of our renovations. So it's still extremely timely to get after these turnkey audiences like the open house um, or DIYers or people that are visiting the Home Depots and the Lowe's. Again, all of these behavioral brand custom audiences that we can, uh, that you can already leverage within Ads Manager. Okay, event marketing. So best practices, when I think of events, I think most people think of like live events, um, concerts um, at different stadiums, even local events like brew fest, winter fest, wine fest, um, local uh, arts and crafts or fairs or things like that, or also uh, conferences and trade shows. But I think something really unique um, is also to think about utilizing events in another way. I was having a conversation with my, one of my colleagues, Brian Shepard, and he had a really, really great perspective of utilizing this from like an agency or from a, a promotional standpoint to offer a location-based marketing as an extension for those that are sponsoring the event, right? You're sponsoring our event for, you know, this wine fest or for this national CES or um, South by Southwest event or something like that. Not only are you going to get out-of-home marketing while 
you know, attendees are there and they're going to see your brand and see your logo. But on top of that, we're going to send out messaging to those attendees to let them know, hey, keynote speaker for this particular brand is going to be on stage four at 9.30 a.m. Don't miss out. We're going to be giving a raffle away, so forth and so on. So you're really being and extending that and amplifying that message for um, those sponsors. So just a unique strategy to think about outside of just trying to reach that niche audience. So thinking of event um, marketing, there's three ways that we want to get in front of someone for events. Pre-event, during event and post event. Pre event, I think, is missed a lot. There, this is a missed opportunity for so many uh, people that come on as manager. They think they just want to target the event, capture those audiences, and retarget. But really, it's super advantageous to think about how can I get brand awareness for this event prior to getting these people there? Because if I can get more brand awareness, I get more event attendees. And then I have a bigger retargeted audience. So some of that um, lends itself already to what we have available in our system, right? So if it's like the um, event, the live event, we have behavioral audiences for that, a live event attendee, uh, concert goers. Maybe it's like I mentioned, a, a beer and, and wine festival. We have um, bar and pub goers audiences, or you can even do different types of brand audiences that might make sense as well. For more local events like the fairs, um, the um, the markets on the weekends, we have location-based solutions where you can leverage our zip code targeting or radial fencing, even neighborhood targeting for certain types of businesses or audiences. And just a caveat, neighborhood targeting is not how you and I think of neighborhoods. It's not like, oh, Mary Claire lives in Eagle Watch um, here in Atlanta. It is a, it's ground truth proprietary lookalike audience that we build off of our proprietary blueprints. So it's a great way to, um, to reach people that are still or like-minded in, in that relevant um, area. And then from a national approach, obviously for the bigger conferences and things like that, targeting those certain locations that you know historically you've seen a lot of visitation come from, um, those markets that might make sense to target. Uh, maybe for like CES, it's like the Silicon Valleys or the Mountain Views, things of that nature. So the next obvious is promoting during the event, right? Reaching those consumers because they're relevant. Dentist, it's a dentist convention and we've got the best insurance for you. Um, that's right. We're gonna reach the, those particular people during that particular point in time to serve them that messaging. Um, maybe it's for um, you know becoming a new supply partner and you wanted to reach those people that are in the aviation field. Again, reaching those people while they're there. Um, and again, from the other perspective of thinking about how can I do this from um, you know amplifying my sponsorship packages for my sponsors is just making that mention to let people know while they're there that this keynote speaker is going on or this happy hour is happening over here sponsored by XYZ brand. Um, come join us at booth 2398 or whatever. Um, so again, just different unique approaches to leveraging reaching people while they're at the event. And then finally, we have the post event. This is the retargeting, right? This is where we've, we're creating that retargeted audience of those event attendees and then re-messaging them, right? And this is, again, why the omni-channel approach is so huge because you can create that retargeted audience within Ads Manager and then reach them across multiple screens. Um, again, amplifying your brand, making your brand top of mind for these uh, very uh, relevant users. So <clears throat> other complimentary use cases is if you're wanting, if you're, for example, um, I have had this happen where people within like a CPG um, or alcohol want to reach different types of audiences that have been at events, great opportunity to do that. So um, just thinking outside again, making sure that you're reaching people that are at that event and then creating that retargeted audience to get your messaging um, for that particular niche, right? Okay. Finally, recruitment marketing. So we put recruitment last because a lot of what we just talked about in event marketing is de definitely going to apply for recruitment. So some of the proven solutions that have been for um, employment and enrollment specifically have been for event targeting, right? And utilizing those best practices pre, during, and post, right, to increase your scale and reach. Other audiences that we already have 
um, that you can have access to is the majority um, within ads manager are going to be B2C facing. So if that's your type of audience, perfect, we've got it for you. Um, but if you're looking for more of that B2B solution, we do have turnkey audiences, one being fast food employees, as well as, health, as, well as healthcare professionals. So those are already in existence within ads manager. Not to mention, you can make your own custom audiences with an ads manager as well. Um, so that's something that you do have access to. Um, but if you wanted something really quick and turnkey, because time is of the essence, those exist. Um, something else to consider is that we have access to third-party audiences. Those live within LiveRamp, where we can access certain type of audiences like decision makers at companies, CMOs, um, people by business departments, so people that are in engineers, um, human resources, finance, you name it. So that is actually an option that we can layer on to uh, your campaign. To caveat, there is a slight uh, increase in CPM, but it's very attainable um, and um, minuscule. So it's something to think about, something to ask your ad expert or your dedicated account executive about, um, should that be something that you're interested in leveraging. Okay, something else to consider would be um, utilizing location targeting for enrollment, right? So for universities, higher educations or trade schools, where you're wanting to target maybe a two-year school or a trade school or community school to uh, drive enrollment at your university. Um, so this is a great way to do that. Also targeting competitors, whether this is for universities or this is for B2B or for something completely different, um, that's a very advantageous strategy and utilizing radial fencing to create that uh, retargeted audience is the best way to do that. Also thinking about other potential locations that 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 individual may be. So for example, um, we've seen a lot of campaigns where they're wanting to target truckers, right? Or people that are truck drivers because there's a shortage, right? So um, some opportunities have been targeting rest stops or way stations, or even the loves travel um, convenience stores, um, because they often have the um, amenities like the showers and the, the rest area. So just other ways to think about that. We already have those audiences built. So um, they're very um, useful in that situation. From a creative reco, what we always want to make sure is, is like first and foremost is really drilling into the benefits of what you're offering, right? Why is this job important? Why is this school the top school to go to? What are the benefits? What are the flexibility? Is there a competitive salary? Is it a work from home position? Um, really, really great to add that and make sure that that's front and center in your messaging. Also adding um, images of people resonates really, really well. So having that, if you can utilize it in the, um, the larger display sides, sizes, that's also very beneficial. Or adding mobile video. Mobile video, I think is such an untapped, like, opportunity. It's It performs so well for CTR and CTR is um, one of the benchmarks that we're going to be leveraging and using as a metric for success for these types of campaigns. So mobile video, even if you had like testimonials from your, you know, current student body or from, you know, someone at your company that loves it and wants to shout it from the rooftops, utilizing mobile video is a strong tactic for creative. We also have a new offering called Ad Messenger. And what you're looking at on the screen is that exactly. It is a scrolling display um, that lives at the bottom where you can add your uh, logo and the content or the messaging that you want that user to see. Um, so this is available. It's got um, wonderful CTR, um, a great CTR um, driver. So definitely something to tap into and talk to your ad expert um, today about. Uh, there is a slight uh, CPM increase, um, but it is performing super well. And again, it's new school. Okay, so really quick, we just wanted to provide a case study, um, a relevant example of how a college leveraged their residential targeting or the, the ability to do residential targeting through Ground Truth to increase enrollment at their college. Um, so residential targeting is something that we can offer, right? What that looks like for anyone that's interested in doing residential targeting, it is an opt-in list that you provide to us where we're targeting at the address level one-to-one. -one. So this is an opt-in marketing list um, that we can work from, right? There has to be over 100 addresses. Usually we want more than that. We'd say 150 to 200 to be safe um, because we privacy is is first and foremost, something that we take very seriously here. And to protect that consumer privacy, we want to make sure that this is someone that is 
actively said, I agree or I approve for this particular brand to market to me. So in this use case, what this college did is they use their direct mail list, right? These are people that signed up for direct mailers. They targeted, um, they, they uploaded that list and we created a custom audience for them. And then they were able to reinforce all of the offerings that they had at their college and why it's the best, right? Um, for, for someone to easily tap and learn more, right? So just some of those results that this campaign saw were um, a really extremely high benchmark, uh, two and a half times higher than our benchmark at uh, 0.77%. And they also saw an effective or an ECPC um, of 63 cents. So altogether, um, an extremely successful campaign they were happy with. We're happy that they were happy, obviously. Um, a little note for the record, most visits, 39% occurred within three days of ad exposure, which is highlighting the effectiveness um, of insights, rich media targeting to drive visits and sales. Okay, so what do we do with all this information, right? Like what are some best practices, some tips and tricks? Um, I broke these out by scale, budget and measurement. So from a scale perspective, if you're running campaigns on ads manager, Nine times out of 10, if anybody is my client, they're going to hear like this for the 10th time um, today on the call, obviously, that um, I highly recommend ad group budget, selecting that when you're creating a new campaign, because it's going to provide you as the um, hands-on keyboard, you know, putting these campaigns together, the most flexibility for making any optimizations through the campaign. What happens oftentimes is people want to use the campaign budget level um, because other platforms may have that as the opportunity for flexibility. For ads manager, ad group budget is your um, option for being able to go in and change flight dates easily, ad budget, um, shift budget around, make sure the budget is applied specifically towards retargeting versus, you know, pre-event um, uh, reach, right? So it's really, really important to use ad group budget first and foremost. Um, the other things, and we say this across all best practices webinar, you're, this is going to be super redundant, but important, all, all the same, is to add those four creative ad sizes for mobile, right? They're listed here. They're also listed in the platform um, when you're uploading a creative, but it's just a, a strong reminder, utilizing all four is going to give you best reach as those four sizes make up the majority of mobile inventory. All right, so for most of these campaigns, what they all have in common is granular targeting, right? Events, very granular. Real estate, very granular, usually. Recruitment, very niche. So we want to make sure that we're serving. We have the best, uh, we're setting our, ourselves realistic expectations, but also setting ourselves up for success by not layering any other information on top of our location targeting. And what I mean by that is removing any demo filters. Demo filters can, can you know, shoot you in the foot if you're really trying to get someone in an event, right? or if you're trying to get someone at an open house, we're pretty much doing that for you within the open house audiences that we've created, but definitely don't recommend adding on any demo filters. And with that same, in that same breath, I would say I'm not, not uh, cherry picking any publisher data as well. So you have that ability to select through different publisher partners. Don't recommend selecting any of those as well as it does hamper scale pretty significantly. And again, the benefit of leveraging location-based marketing don't care if they're on something for gardening versus health versus sports. We care that they're in that moment at that time. And that's what matters most, right? So also finally, for each one of these strategy, really important to uh, create a remessaging or an audience for remessaging. That in essence is creating a retargeted audience that again, you can then utilize um, post-event or for extended reach across multiple screens, right? Okay, so moving to budget, we get asked this question all the time. Recommendations on budget. What do you see work well? Your projected impressions is going to ultimately determine your budgets. So what happens oftentimes for these types of verticals is you're going to see on the screen it project less than a thousand. And, and that's the case sometimes. So what will our, our recommendation would be to set your budget between $250 to $500 if that's the case. Um, we're not able to showcase what's going to be available in the future. And so for events, it's really, really hard for us to say, okay, put a thousand, put twenty five hundred, put ten thousand in, um, because you know uh, that there's going to be forty thousand people at this event. So if you garner that it's a very, very large event, put more budget in. If it's a very local event, put less budget in. The other thing would be, um, we'll talk about the the rule for applying that budget. Um, I'll go ahead and skip to that. But basically, you could put 
250 or 500 dollars and spread it out of course over the different strategies that you're using right so if i'm thinking events i'm thinking i want to put you maybe 40 percent of my budget pre and during and 60 percent of my budget um in the retargeting or i split it 50 50 or i front load and put 60 percent of my budget and making sure that i'm getting those event attendees and then 40 percent into the retargeting post event so for events specifically, um, I would say that for campaigns less than seven days, it is extremely advantageous and beneficial for you to make sure that your CPM is higher than $7. And that's because you're trying to win impressions within a short duration of time. Um, so the higher the, the CPM, the more opportunity you are to win those impressions and, and serve within that very short window, right? Um, so this is kind of speaking more to event marketing. I think that's the question we get asked most about for budget. Um, for real estate and for recruitment, you obviously have a little bit longer window of time. So higher budgets make more sense for a brand awareness play and getting that extended reach out. And finally, with measurement. So measurement, ultimately, at the end of the day, it's very subjective to each individual client running campaigns on here, right? Um, it's going to be based on what your ultimate KPI is. If your KPI is leads or is this or that, like, great, we can help you get there. But our what we're doing is more on the front end or on the top level here, um, top of the funnel by getting that awareness out and creating that audience and then ultimately making you, um, your product, your business, your opportunity more top of mind. Um, so I would say it's definitely subjective. Your CTR, which is what I mentioned earlier, is the metric that we really look at from a performance uh, angle. Uh, the benchmarks that we see are usually 0.2% to point. 4% typically. Um, I think industries is uh, 0.09 to 0.2, so a little bit higher. Um, and if you're ever in doubt, if you ever want to talk it through, reach out to us. We're here for that. We want to understand a little bit more about what you're trying to do, um, how we can be beneficial to you, how we can help you in achieving those goals. So we've weaved this in throughout the conversation conversation, but just to reiterate, if you want to extend your reach, amplify your messaging, it's really so important to make sure that you're leveraging cross screens, right? Mobile's great, especially for getting in front of the audience first and foremost, but let's take that and let's leverage it to the best of our ability and, and extend that messaging across desktop, across OTT, OTT or even connected TV directly, um, especially if you're new in the area, you're trying to reach someone new in the area. This is so cri critical and pivotal, and it's so easy to do. Um, it just makes sense to, to hammer this in and make sure that you guys are really understanding the benefit of why this is a very advantageous strategy to be an omni-channel solution for your campaigns. Okay. I am going to stop talking now. Um, I've seen a lot of questions come through. Um, so let's see. Let me start at the top here. Okay. Um, starting with, okay. I'm just trying to get to the uh, questions. Okay. Okay, sorry. Um, I think um, our moderator let you know that if you were on um, and had your phone out that when we were showing that example from CTV for that real estate example, the QR code was something that could be scanned. So maybe leveraging that if you're pushing or once this um, webinar is in sent um, to your email, you can utilize that feature as something fun to, to check out. Um, okay. Are you seeing a decline in audiences since COVID or is it coming back? So Chris Burkhart asked this question, if we've seen decline in audience since COVID. You know, we did in 2020. Um, what we did to navigate that was extend our look back window, right? Because obviously people weren't going anywhere. We wanted to understand and normalize that data by extending the look back window for our audiences from 90 days to 180 days. It's since been reversed to 90. We have not seen an issue with scale um, across the majority of our audiences. There may be some here and there that have taken a dip and a dive, but um, not to a point where it's in, impacting um, campaigns. Great question though. Robert Vasquez asked, um, what can be done if a location cannot be blueprinted for whatever reason? Would you recommend radius targeting? Absolutely. So 
something really important to understand is that if you're trying to get in front of a employee, um, blueprints is not the best way to do that. Because what our blueprints do is weed out employees. We look at dwell time. We look at the amount of times a device ID is entering a blueprint location and we weed those out because the majority of people leveraging ads manager and our audiences are looking to target that consumer that's going into a, a target, a Whole Foods, a what, what have you, right? So that's not the most advantageous strategy to get in front of someone that is a decision maker, someone that may be working there, right? So we absolutely recommend the radial fencing um, for the majority of locations. If it's a non-sensitive location, you can target as tight as a 0.1 mile, so a tenth of a mile around that location. If it is a sensitive location, we're gonna it's a mile. And that's, again, this is to protect the end user's uh, privacy, which is key for your brand, your business, the consumer, but also for ground truth. Um, okay. And I apologize if I was talking fast, it's because I'm, I'm really excited about this content. So, um, again, we will be sending this out <laughs> after the webinar so you can review, um, if, and when you have time, apologies on if I was talking fast. Um, Dolce Sanchez, and I, I think that's how you pronounce your name. So apologies, apologies. I messed that up. Um, asked, how do you present the results to the client? How do you present the results to the client? Are you, I guess that would, um, that's a very interesting question because we have the ability from a, like how do you physically show them by downloading, exporting um, our content via Excel or the PDF. You have that ability in Ads Manager to take that data that you're seeing and create charts or apply it into a PowerPoint presentation. Um, if you want to follow up with a little bit more on what you're asking for, um, I'm happy to, to um, dive a little deeper into that. Um, but ultimately, the, the things that we would want to understand or the client would, would want to understand, we want to ask that question, what's important to the client, like what are the metrics they're looking to see, and then we would present that way. Um, so again, Harping on um, reach, harping on the CTR would be for these types of um, campaigns, the best um, starting data to work with. If that doesn't answer your question, just let me know. Okay. Um, so I was asked to repeat the last point about an omni-channel strategy. So the omni-channel solution, just to reiterate, um, why it's different, why it's unique for Ground Truth specifically when it comes to omni-channel is we're audience first. You're targeting a, a, an offline audience, someone that's uh, physically visited a specific location or has a specific behavior based on physical foot traffic patterns. And we're reaching that same audience across multiple screens. So we're able to take an open house audience or retargeted audience that was at an event, for example, and reach that particular participant or device ID across their desktop or their OTT devices or connect to TV directly. So it's really, really relevant. You're not targeting based on content, maybe, um, because I'm trying to reach someone that's in market for um, a new home, maybe they're re watching more DIY shows. It's not that. I don't care what content they're consuming. I care that they are at that event or that they make up, you know, or they're this type of behavior. And therefore, that's what we focus on. And that's how we're able um, to really get that messaging to the right person, that right audience. Um, hopefully that helps answer the question. But ultimately what I was mentioning, what I was saying is that omni-channel is the way to go. It's so easy to turn on in Ads Manager. You click the channel, you add in your targeting, um, you set your budget, and then you um, set your CPM. So for um, OTT and CTV, that's a $25 CPM. And for mobile and desktop channels, that's $3.50, just to let you know. Matt Montgomery, um, in a B2B campaign where we are blueprinting a business in order to create brand awareness to employees, how do we best overcome the dwell factor where we don't want to ignore the dwellers? So again, um, this is this is radial, right? This is radial fencing to reach that employee. Um, you can create a location group or create um, an audience based on businesses, but you're ultimately going to be reaching consumers as well. Um, so I would always recommend usually if you're doing that um, and creating a location group and uh, uh, sorry, let me um, stop sharing my screen. I was asked to stop sharing my screen. 
Um, sorry about that. Yeah, so um, the best solution is if you are creating a location group of those custom businesses to select the radial fencing for sure. And again, uh, point one, if it's not a sensitive location. Absolutely. Um, okay, I feel like we have a few more questions. I'm really excited that you're engaging and that you're finding this content um, helpful. Um, so let's see. What am I missing, Evelyn? Is there um, one that you can send or how can I get to it? Okay, here we go. All right, Roberto Vasquez, for open houses, where does that MLS location group live? What's the name? Is it available in all DMAs and can you nearby county or even city? Great question. Um, so in ads manager, when you select the ad group audiences, right, the targeting solution for audiences, um, the search bar comes up and you're able to type in open house. When you type in open house, it's going to populate under the umbrella of location group. So when you automatically type it in, Ultimately, it should populate. We're working on to where if you type in something, it will ultimately populate first as the first option for you. So if I type in Walmart, Walmart would populate and I wouldn't have to select brand. Um, so in the search feature, when you type in open houses, you see behavior, brand, category, and then there's an error to scroll over and there's another umbrella called location group. It lives under location group and those are where all of your options are. You can absolutely utilize DMA, zip code city. We don't currently have county level targeting. It is absolutely something that we're looking into because we know it's really, it's, it's a very strong solution for a lot of um, businesses and brands to have that. So it's not currently available, but is absolutely something that's on our, um, or that we're in conversations with our product and engineering team with. Jack, how do you know if there's a demo filter on? Okay, so in Ads Manager, when you're setting up ad groups, um, you start with naming the ad group, selecting the targeting. So whether that's audiences or location, inputting the information of who you're wanting to reach or where you're wanting to reach, then identifying what you want that user to do. So specifying where to drive the user, whether it's uh, measuring foot traffic or driving them online, those are your two options. And then a few rows down and maybe the next one, it says uh, demos. And if you check that bucket or that box on, by demographics or demos, um, you'll see a few demos pop up. So we have household um, targeting or household income, ethnicity, um, age, gender. Those are a few that you have the ability to cherry pick. Kevin, I'm so sorry. Okay. Um, is there any way, Kevin Collins asks, is there any way to optimize to the best performing creative in Ads Manager? Meaning optimize the best size or even more important, the best creative ex um, execution? Um, yeah, great question. So in Ads Manager on the campaign dashboard screen, it may be beneficial to have uh, what we can do, Kevin, is we can follow up with a screenshot of this so you can actually visualize what I'm talking about. But in the campaign dashboard where all of your data lives, you have um, a feature right before the reporting name where you drop down and it says all the reports. There's a feature that says level. And when you see level, you can drop, you can select that drop down menu and you have the option for campaign, ad group, and creative. And that's where you would select creative. And then for each ad group, you can see the creative that lives there and the stats by creative. So that's great. That's going to show you, hey, this 320 by 50 banner for this particular ad group is performing extremely well. Maybe we want to shift more rotation towards that. In order to do that, you have to then click into the ad group itself and go to the creative ads um, page, right? And then you can do, um, there's like a checkbox by each creative where you can add in frequency capping and you can also do a rotation percentage. So this is where you could say, I want 90% of my inventory or the inventory and budget going towards this one particular creative. Um, hopefully that helps answer that question. Um, okay, and another question um, would be using mobile video for enhancing CTR. Um, there's currently no ability to use the Grand Tr Ground Truth landing page builder for video. Are there any plans to make the landing page function available for video in the near future? So within the landing page, we, to your point, there's not a drag and drop for like vast video um, for living within the landing page. The, the workaround right now is adding in a YouTube um, link for where video um, 
could be, basically be clicked out into. Um, so that would be the video format within the landing page section. When I'm men mentioning mobile video, that would replace your display banner instead. So it would be a drag and drop video um, for you know, being the first thing that a user sees when your ad appears. Um, I can absolutely, Kevin, I will ask our um, P&E team if there are plans for adding a drag and drop vast tag or vast video file feature into our landing page option. Um, that's not something I have the uh, knowledge of right this second, but it's definitely a great question and something we can ask our team. Um, Bridget asked, how would I find out why my ad group is targeting a location I am not looking to market? Um, that's a great question. Sometimes what can happen is your, especially in retargeting strategies, um, oftentimes people forget to apply a location filter where it ultimately will target nationally. And then you're seeing impressions go to other markets that you didn't intend for them to go. So when we're creating any type of audience or creating any type of targeting, making sure that applied location filter is on and double checking that it's on. If you're not trying to do a national reach campaign, you're only trying to target some of the markets. The other thing to do would be is uh, check in um, the location tab. So in the campaign dashboard, I'm very I'm using my hands a lot in the campaign dashboard on the summary page you have the summary screen you have the location tab and then you have the audience tab in location tab it shows you a map right so i'm not sure if this is what you're indicating of where you're seeing impressions or clicks coming from different areas within that map that map is just a projection you're going to want to export a location report so there's an export feature within the dashboard it's the down arrow circled it lives right above your ad groups. If you hit that export arrow or da downward facing arrow and export, uh, and a pop-up comes up on the screen and it'll have location report. And if you download that location report, it's actually going to show you um, from a state, a DMA, a zip code, and also down to the store level where your impressions and your clicks are coming from. So that's actually a more accurate understanding of where you're being, where you're delivering. If at any point you're seeing impressions or something else go to another market that is not listed in your campaign, let us know and we'll come in and we'll troubleshoot. You're welcome. Um, okay. Sorry, I'm getting told I have the ability to see here. Okay. Um, Oh, okay. There we are. Sorry. Um, okay. Robert also asked, or Roberto, excuse me, Roberto Vasquez asked, um, does GT platform offer a lead generation form on the available custom landing page? If yes, can I integrate it with Zapier? Okay. So at this time, um, there's not an ability for someone to form fill in the landing page, right? It would be a click out or an option to go into a, a, your third party landing page for them to apply this information. Um, that's what we have thus far. And again, it's just meant to be informative. It's not meant to be form filled. Um, so hopefully that answers your question. And I don't know if we have any plans to integrate some kind of form fill lead at one point, I believe don't, don't quote me on this and hopefully not on the call and like, don't say that. Um, but I, I believe it's been brought up that we don't want to have that PII, that personally identifiable information um, in into our system for you to then utilize. I think it needs to go directly um, to your website or your landing page for you to obtain that information and not to be sourced through ground truth. Again, that's that's one possible explanation. I'll have to verify that and double check, but that could be a reason. Tim Engel, um, oh, okay. Um, so, and then can you ultimately, you also asked him, can you ultimately create a lookalike type audience based off the results and data points gathered from residential targeting. I don't think that you can do lookalike type audiences off of residential because our lookalikes are based off of brand audiences because we know that certain users go to certain brands um, and we're understanding that visitation. And again, because residential is um, comprised of information that you're giving us, we're not tracking that user in our system. So I don't believe that's a function. Again, we're taking notes. This will be recorded so we can follow up with additional information on why or why that's not available. Um, Kevin Collins asked, you mentioned using mobile video for, any, okay, did I already, um, I answered that. Sorry about that. Um, oh, okay. When will you allow HTML5 app? I, I'm almost I almost am certain that that is some a feature that is being worked on in our product roadmap. 
Um, I believe that's the case for res. If you're on the call, please don't shoot me. Um, I think that is something that we've been receiving a lot of information or a lot of requests on. So we wanted to prioritize that as an option in an offering. Um, so that is thing that I believe we are looking into. I don't have a set date on when that would be available, but I do believe that is something that we're looking um, into. Um, okay. Um, sorry, moving forward. Brian Fitzgerald, I know that name. Um, if we are trying to connect with dental offices, not patients, can the message be directed to people who are there for longer periods of time? So ultimately, if we're trying to connect with dental offices, not patients. For long, or so, Brian, I'm guessing you're wanting to target like the dentist or the office managers or things of that nature. Um, that's when you would want to do the radial fencing and create the retargeting. So they're able to then engage with you after they leave the audit or the, the location potentially. Um, there's not a way in the system at this point in time to extend well time or extend or go in and manipulate that type of information on only want to reach users that are there between these hours or that have visited this many times. That would be like a custom audience. Um, so that necessarily a, a feature available right this second. Um, again, it would be a, a custom audience and it would depend on scale. So I know that we can do that for national campaigns at times for different locations. Um, but on a local level, I don't believe that's, um, that's available. So that's something we can also follow up on. Um, and the time limit for dweller is at 30 minutes, one hour. I, that's also going to depend on the, um, the particular category of the the location right so for example a mcdonald's dweller could be a lot shorter than someone at an auto dealership so i believe from what i understand from our audiences it's going to be dependent on um the vertical itself uh, but that's something again that's done on the back end we just know we're not counting drive-by visits so people that are walking by driving by um anything like that these are people that are actually in those locations for more than a certain amount of time so it wouldn't be anything like you know, five minutes or less, right? So for the most part, so for, if we're talking like a McDonald's audience or a fast food um, goer, they could be there for five to 10 minutes and then leave because they've gotten their food. Um, but it wouldn't be anything less than that. And Kevin asked again, um, when you are running a video campaign and not a banner campaign, are there any plans to make a landing page function available for video? Oh, I got what you're saying. So clicking into the... Um, clicking into the video and then going and deriving to a landing page. I don't know. And, and if that's what you're asking, we can absolutely follow up because I think that's actually a really great idea. Okay. So um, thank you guys. I think that's all of our questions. Um, I really appreciate your engagement. We just a quick reminder, if you um, are still here, please fill out the poll. It's so helpful for us understanding what's important um, to you uh, to keep content relevant Um we're so glad that we were able to see you today. Please reach out. Um, we will follow up individually with those questions from those participants. Don't forget to check your email for the webinar that'll be coming through in an email format, share it. Um, and hopefully you got a lot out of today, but we appreciate your time. Um, bless you all and be safe out there.